The rising cost of power is something which concerns us all. Here in the UK, it's getting a little out of hand. Looking at the power consumption of my normal everyday uh, HP workstation, the one that I do most of my work on, everyone just browsing the internet, even just after boot up, which draws a lot of power, and idling, which roughly is about 146 watts, um, it's too much. It's something has to give. Again, I'm still on the HP workstation, and we're going to have a look at the, the CPU speed dev.cpu.0.frequency and it tells us it's 2927 and if we have a look at um, the overall system uh, in a little bit more detail so it's dev.cpu.0 uh, and there we go and it's uh, running at about 50 degrees the highest it got was uh, 103 that's uh, interesting and just generally a little bit of information that the fastest it's going uh, is 2927. So that, that's probably about as fast as I can get this one to go on the uh, stock cooler. There's not an overclock option on these HP machines. And if you run an MD5 uh, test, it gets done in 2.01 seconds. And 473.16 megabyte per second. At least I think it's megabyte. If it's not megabyte, please correct me in the comments down below. That's not too bad. And it should be on a machine like this. And indeed, we'll have a look at uh, some screen fetch. Nope, we'll have a look at Neil fetch. Uh, yeah, it doesn't show up on this grey background, but you get the idea. It's, um, it's got twin uh, Xeon X 5570s. Uh, there's two with four cores, so it gives me a total of eight cores. Running at 2.926 gigahertz. So again, it's not the fastest. And with a GeForce GTX 750. And 48 gigabytes of RAM. But it uses up a lot of electric. So, in my quest for something leaner, and something more economical, I'll turn to something which I've been covering since 2017, and that's the Raspberry Pi, especially the Raspberry Pi 400. It's an excellent machine and something which I feel will uh, do the job very nicely. And FreeBSD runs on it very well too. So if you have a look at any of these videos, uh, you can see how I installed and how you can use it. I'll leave some links in the description box down below. This is not an installation video or a how-to. I'm just going to simply try and show you how to get the best out of it. And indeed, if we have a look at the Raspberry Pi 400 power draw, I'm sorry about the... Uh, Lack of light, it was the, the light didn't come on this device, so I'm going to have to buy a new one, I think. And as you can see, it was drawing roughly about 5.4, 5.3 watts. And that's on idle. So not too bad. And we're switching over to the Raspberry Pi 400. And if we run the same commands as last time, so syscontrol or sysctl .freq, frequency. You can see the Raspberry Pi 400 is idling at 600, which is really not ideal because the default speed for the Raspberry Pi 400, is, I think it's 1800. The stock Raspberry Pi 4 is 1500, but the Raspberry Pi 400 has a better heat sink and comes already kind of like overclocked if you are running at 1800. So, and the reason for this is FreeBSD doesn't, it doesn't put it into its fast mode, uh, as it were. So I'm going to show you several ways that we can get the best out of Raspberry Pi uh, using FreeBSD. And the first few ways is going to be perhaps the, um, the most sensible way. And the last way is a little bit more extreme, but it's one that I use and it's rock solid stable. So we'll have a look. To fix the idling problem in the Raspberry Pi, uh, so it's not idling at 600 all the time and therefore feeling slow. So first thing we're going to root. And we can issue uh, syscontrol dev.cpu.0 frequency equals, and now we can actually specify 1800. And that will tell the Raspberry Pi to run at 1800, which is its stock speed. 
And if we just do the command again, look, there it is. It's running at 1800, running at 40 degrees, 40.2 Celsius. We're just going to drop it back down to the slow speed again, because I want to show you something else. If we do the MD5 test. And eventually it will get there. It's a lot slower than the HP. It's done in 9.62 seconds with 99.07 per second. If we ratchet up back up to 1800 and do the same test again, obviously we're going to see it halved. And there we go. Well, just, just actually by third, really. So it's 3.19 seconds and 298.48. So there is a marked improvement, of course, as you would expect. But we can do better than that. We can push the pie a little bit further, I think. Okay, we're going to drop it down again to show you what uh, the second way we can do this. So instead of using SysControl to bump up the speed, we can add PowerD to the rc.conv for it to start up automatically when the system boots. So we've added it to the rc.conv now. And we can start the service now if you don't really want to reboot. So service power D restart. Oh, never mind. It's, it's not running, but it's running now. I'm not used to power D running. So that's that's the more sensible two ways we can do it. But we're gonna have a look at the perhaps a less sensible, and you do this at your own risk. I mean, but the pie should be fine if you do this. But you know you might crash the system or it might be unstable, in which case drop it down or don't do this. So if we have a look at NeoFetch now, and you can see we're on the Raspberry Pi. And we're just gonna uh, syscontrol dev.cpu.0.freak. And but um we're running at 2147. How did we get this far? Well, first, I don't know if you need to do this, but I always tend to do this automatically. I always have power D started. Okay, so I always, I always like to have PowerD go in as a default uh, so it gets a machine full speed. Then we go into the MS-DOS partition that every Raspberry Pi has. Well, especially if you boot up on it. And in that, there should be a file called config.txt. We need to edit config.txt. And in there, you will see there are some entries that I've added already. There is arm underscore boost, GPU mem, over voltage six, force turbo, arm frequency, and GPU frequency. Now, you can add these if you wish. You can drop the over voltage down to uh, four if you wish. It's entirely up to you. You experiment, you find one that's stable for your system. Well, bear in mind that this is for the Raspberry Pi 400. Um, HDMI safe is something which you should always uh, comment out because then it makes your display not too big if you have that default you, you, you it's gonna look weird and too large so you always comment that out and you'll be fine uh, well at the moment I'm running at a temperature of 46 so that's only about six degrees uh, higher with a top speed of 2147 and doing the MD5 test it was at 2.69 and 353.91 a second, which I think compares favorably to what we had on the HP. And as you can see, on the HP, we had 2.01 seconds, and on the supercharged Pi, it's 2.69, so that's not that different. Speed, we had 473 and 353. Not bad. Uh, on the stock Raspberry Pi, it was 9.62 with 99 and even on a full speed normal uh, speed Raspberry Pi 3.19 so we haven't done too bad at all so yeah very nice and you know the Raspberry Pi 400 running with these little overclocks you can either do the the normal ones the safe ones or you can go for the more extreme and I found that the extreme ones are, are very stable and it gives you a system running FreeBSD which I don't know it's not that far off the HP there are some limitations, of course. There are some caveats. And one of them is video editing is really um, a no-go. Not until proper graphics drivers are implemented. And uh, if it matters to you, then uh, Wi-Fi support for the inbuilt 
Wi-Fi. Although there are ways around that if you want to use Ethernet or, which I do, or you want to use a dongle for an older um, standard. But saying all that, I think FreeBSD on the Raspberry Pi is a very, um, very nice place to be. It uses <laughs> so much less, what, 30 times less? 30 times less wattage? Then a uh, then my workstation and just idling. That's, that's uh, to me that alone is enough to swap. I mean, I've got a whole room full uh, of computers running uh, for the kids, and now that's going to have to change as well. Maybe I can give them tablets. Maybe I can pick up a bunch of Raspberry Pi fours. I don't know. But the way that the prices are rising for electric, and there's no indication that they're going to come down anytime soon. So I think we all have to change. We'll all have to change the way we do things regarding energy and power. And so using Raspberry Pi <coughs> and FreeBSD, of course, it gives me, your mileage may vary, it depends on what you want to do with your computer, but it gives me, for everyday use, for browsing the internet, for doing shopping, etc., a very, very cost-efficient and stable and very beautiful system. Anyway, this was only a, a small video. It really wasn't a how-to. It was more of a demonstration. If you like my videos, if you find them helpful, then please consider subscribing and hitting that like button so I know that people actually like the videos that I'm making. And I'll thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.